Hello Taurus babies, it's Maria, insightfulastrology.com. Welcome to October. God, time is flying. I can't even believe this. I'm recording this in the middle of September, but time just keeps moving on. It really does. Wow. At least I still have a tan. <laughs> I can't complain if I still have a tan and, and I'm going into October, okay? So, all right, guys, big month ahead for you. Huge, actually, because your ruling planet, Venus, will go retrograde. And although I'm going to give you a pretty nice handle on uh, understanding on what you can expect, I do want to let you know that I, I have a Venus retrograde teleseminar through my website. You can click on the link in the description box to register and get the download. And that recording is going to give you tons of information about the Venus retrograde phenomenon, about what it really means going retrograde in Scorpio, the karmic implications, and then how uh, when it retrogrades into Libra, what that means as well. This is significant. Now, I got to tell you, don't minimize this, please. Your ruler is going retrograde. And that only occurs once every 18 months. And I can guarantee you that it's going to be a very specific karmic time for Taurus, Sun, Taurus rising, Libra, Sun, Libra rising, Scorpio sun, Scorpio rising. It absolutely will be. It always is when your ruler goes retrograde. So, uh, and I'll also tell you that this is when faded events occur in relationships. And, you know, on a personal note, I'll tell you that I, you know, I'm a, my son is in Taurus and I met my ex-husband during a Venus retrograde cycle. Venus was retrograde in my fifth house of romance when we met. And so obviously that was a significant karmic relationship. Fast forward years later, after my divorce, I had another significant relationship uh, on again, off again for nine years. I, I called him my part-time boyfriend, but it was a signif very significant relationship and I did love him. And that relationship ended the day Venus went retrograde over my natal Venus in Aries in the, in the 12th house, okay? So Venus retrograde cycles are really karmically significant for turning points in love and, and also money and for you guys with self-worth. You know, the one thing that tends to happen when Venus goes retrograde for Venus-ruled people is that we, we feel unbeautiful, in some way, We're, we lack in confidence. We lack in that that sparkle, that Venusian something that usually will make us attractive to others. We don't feel it as much because our ruler is sleeping. It's, it's literally I call Venus retrograde sleeping beauty for that reason, because all of a sudden everything that makes us beautiful, we feel like we don't have access to anymore. It's like what? What happened? Where did I go? I lost my mojo. Okay. But it's a really important time because when Venus is retrograde, we're supposed to be reassessing something important about love, about our self-worth, what we bring to the table in a relationship, whether or not a relationship is still valuable and worth it, and also money. And, and are we delivering value in our business, at our job? Okay. And of course, wherever Venus happens to retrograde in your chart for that cycle, the themes are there as well. But you guys, Taurus, Venus is going to go retrograde on October 5th in your partnership sector, the house of relationship. Next month in November, she'll retrograde into your sixth house. And we'll talk about that next month. But right now, I mean, the karma, the karma in relationships is no freaking joke. No joke, guys. Do not mess with this energy. Do not try to dismiss it. Don't try to ignore it. This is the, man, this is all of the, the dark matter connected to your relationship that you've been trying to sweep under the rug. It's coming out. It's coming out for you to deal with. Any fears that you have in your relationship connected to suspicion, betrayal, um, a, a shady situation. You know, Scorpio is complicated. Scorpio is, I mean, this is the obsessive 
fatal attraction, faded attraction, love triangles. I mean, this is such complicated energy. This is also, I love you to death. I would die for you kind of love. It's, it's a Venus Pluto love energy. Venus and Scorpio. It just is. So it could go in either direction. It could go in the most illuminative, transformative, empowering love expression, or it could go to the dark side and, you know, be the Lorena Bobbitt or the, um, oh my gosh, what was her name? Oh my God, I'm forgetting her name. The, the young 17 year old that shot in the head, point blank, her boyfriend's wife, Mary Jo Buttafuoco was the wife. What the heck was the girl's name who shot her? I'm forgetting her name. I don't know why, but that kind of energy, the darker side of love, it's coming out <laughs> with Venus in Scorpio retrograde in your partnership sector. So there is some kind of dark matter in your relationship that needs to be confronted, needs to be addressed, needs to be healed. And for some of you, it is about letting go. It's, it might be about a painful ending, a choice to walk away from something toxic, very toxic, if it's in the shadow. If, and, and only you know this, guys. Only you know where you are in your relationship life. But if you're in something toxic, if you're in something that's not serving you, that's making you feel like total shit, this might, might be when you decide to walk away. Now, if on the other hand, there is deep mutual love, but you've been in an it's complicated situation for far too long, the retrograde is going to change things. It's going to completely upend the dynamic you thought you had. And these shifts are going to be radical, fast, sudden, because this Venus retrograde cycle is connected to three Venus-Uranus oppositions in the sky. The first one we had on September 12th. The second one we're having on October 31st. The third one won't be until the end of November on the 30th, and that'll be in uh, different signs. It'll be in Aries and Libra. But the first two are in Taurus and, and uh, Scorpio. So you guys are, it's the sudden change. Sudden, oh my God, okay? You got a hint of this in the middle of September. But now that you're going to have the second retrograde Uranus-Venus opposition on the 31st of October, I'm telling you, a major, major sudden development is happening in your love life situation. And the outcome really does depend on where your relationship is. Is it in the shadow? Have you been dancing with the devil? Or is this that ultimate deep connection that you feel the power of love can conquer all and you decide that you both want to fight for it? Depends on you and your situation, but I'm telling you, it's going to be extreme. It's going to be one or the other. Okay. And if you're completely single, if you've got no love interest, you got nothing going on. Um, while it's, it's not recommended to actively pursue a new relationship during Venus retrograde, I got to tell you, this is when your faded love experiences tend to come into your life. So if you are meant to meet the next great love of your life during Venus retrograde, just know it's a very karmic situation. It just is. And like I said, I met my ex-husband during Venus retrograde. We were together for years and years and we had two children. So don't avoid getting to know someone. Just know that, that it's going to take a little bit of extra time for that relationship to get off the ground. Okay. So uh, there's also a new moon on October 8th in your health and work sector. And this is a bit of a stressful new moon because it's square Pluto in your ninth house. So I feel like you've got a new opportunity but there's some kind of controlling influence that you have to deal with connected to um, maybe an ed a re educational requirement that is related to your job. Or maybe this has to do with uh, broadcasting, publishing. There is a new opportunity for you guys, though, with work. And if you want to look for new work, I, I would say go for it. I don't necessarily think you're going to make more money because Venus is retrograde right now. 
But I think that what might end up happening is you might end up going back to a job that you used to have because Venus will go retrograde in this part of your chart next month. So there might be this opportunity and you're struggling with whether or not you want to take it this month. That, that would make sense, actually. Okay, so Mercury is going to go into Scorpio and your seventh house of partnership on the 9th. And that's going to help with communication, with all this Venus retrograde stuff that's happening in your partnership, in your relationship. And there will be a very potentially healing conversation that happens right around the 15th when Mercury is conjunct Venus retrograde. I really like this. Um, it's going to be about issues from the past that you never seem to be able to resolve that now you are going to fix. You are going to resolve them. And again, the choice is going to be let go or move forward. Forgive, forget, move forward, that kind of thing, okay? So full moon in Taurus, guys, on the 24th. Full moon in your sign. And this full moon is really interesting. It's packing a punch because it's right next to Uranus, retrograde, opposite Venus, retrograde. <laughs> and so I really think that that full moon time period between the 24th and the 31st, you're going to be buzzing. You're going to be, you might be a nervous wreck. I'm not going to lie. I want you guys to do whatever you can to calm yourself, calm your energy, because this is the last leg of Uranus in Taurus until March of 2019. In early November, he's going back into Aries. But right now, between October 24th and the 31st, he's going to be so stimulated between that full moon, between the Venus-Uranus opposition on the 31st, that week. Jesus. I mean, life is going to come at you like never before with major changes in your life, in, especially in relationships, especially in relationships. Uh, this is when it's all happening, but it doesn't have to be negative. This full moon is also making a perfect trine to Saturn in your ninth house. Your spiritual beliefs and faith might really get you through this time. Talking to a spiritual mentor might help. I mean, if you guys are, if you have a marriage on the rocks, you might go to your priest or a clergy member for guidance. And then the healing comes in that way. That would be a great way to use this full moon if you're married. It really would. And, and you need some extra help in the relationship. So uh, this, there's support and surprise connected to this full moon for you. But if you are an early degree Taurus, meaning you're born in April, and you're a Taurus, the end of April, this full moon is going to change your life. You will have to let go of something to begin something new. And it might just be an, a habit or a pattern that you've been stuck in. You, you need to break free of something because Uranus is attached to this full moon. So you need to break free of something in order to embrace the next chapter of your life. And that, my friends, will be quite profound. So, yep, <laughs> what a month October's going to be, right? Enjoy the ride. Let me know how it works out for you in the comments below. And thank you all so much for your support of the channel. Keep liking, sharing, and subscribing, and telling your friends about it, because I so appreciate your support and your love. Bye.